So, if Hans Hart is okay, I declare open this hearing of the Senate Economics Reference Committee for the inquiry into the Australia's uh, sovereign naval shipbuilding capability. On the 19th of September 2019, the Senate referred this inquiry to the committee. Uh, referred this inquiry to the Committee for Inquiry and report by 3rd of December 2020. And that has subsequently been extended to 30th of June 2021. The Committee has received 36 submissions which are available on the Committee's website. As this is a public hearing, a Hansard transcript of proceedings is being made. However, the Committee may determine or agree to a request to have evidence heard in camera. Information on procedural rules governing uh, public hearings and claims of public interest immunity have been provided to witnesses and available from the Secretariat. <clears throat> Any witness called to answer a question for the first time should state their full name and the capacity in which they appear. Witnesses should speak clearly and into the microphone to assist Hansard to record proceedings. For those attending uh, via video conference, please note that in order to assist with the recording of this hearing, please ensure your microphone is set to mute when you are not speaking. I remind uh, media representatives listening to the following media guidelines and any instructions of the committee. Secretariat. I ask everyone to ensure uh, they have switched off or rendered silent their mobile phones. And I would also like to advise witnesses that answers to any questions on notice should be sent to the Secretariat by the close of business, 19th of February, 2021. I now welcome representatives from the Department of Defence Thank you for appearing before the committee today. I invite you to make a brief opening statement should you wish to do so. And for the Hansard record, could you please state your name and the capacity in which you appear? Over to you, Mr Moriarty. Well, thank you very much, uh, Chair, and um, Greg Moriarty, Secretary of the Department of Defence. Uh, Chair, I would like to make a, a short uh, opening comment in, re uh, in relation to one aspect of the the work of, of the committee. Chair, last year, the Senate Economics Reference Committee sought access to a range of pre- and post-contract industry capability plans in support of the inquiry into Australia's sovereign naval shipbuilding capability. <clears throat> Consistent with the view of the Minister of Defence, senior defence officials and I hold the view that the pre- and post-contract Australian industry capability plans contain commercially sensitive information and it is not in the public or national interest to produce these plans beyond the public versions that provide an overview of the plans but without the sensitive commercial information. My office has confirmed with the Office of the Minister for Defence that this remains the view of the Minister and the Government. As the Secretary of the Department, I have a responsibility to protect the national interest and the interests of the Commonwealth and taxpayers while ensuring the delivery of government-approved capability and Australian industry outcomes. I am also responsible for the implementation of government policy across the Department. This includes being responsible for ensuring that the ongoing procurement processes supporting Australia's critical naval shipbuilding programs are conducted in an efficient, effective, economical and ethical manner pursuant to the Public Governance, Performance and Accountability Act. I reiterate, it is the Department's view that disclosure of the commercially sensitive information detailed in these plans would be detrimental to the national interest and disclosure of the commercially sensitive information would cause significant damage to the commercial interests of the Commonwealth in connection with these critical naval shipbuilding programs. The considered position of the Department is that the provision of the strategically important and sensitive information contained in the tendered and contracted AIC plans is likely to compromise national security, damage the Commonwealth's commercial interests and undermine the effective and efficient delivery of Australia's sovereign naval shipbuilding enterprise. I can further confirm that department officials have engaged with senior public service officers in the Department of Finance, 
who have the portfolio responsibility for PGPA and CPR compliance, the Attorney-General's Department and the Pri Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. I can confirm that all of these officials support the position of the Department of Defence. Thank you, Chair. And can we have that uh, opening statement table? I'll, I'll, I'll organise that, Chair. All right, so look, I, I'll just head off for a, for a few moments. And I'm not looking at this in a particularly, um, uh, from any particular perspective, other than that the Senate gave this committee a reference. Now, you would be familiar with the terms of that reference. And amongst the terms of that reference is the ongoing examination of contract and scrutiny of expenditure. Now, the department's performance when we've requested information has been nothing short of abysmal. You have redacted publicly available information and sent it to us. It's almost like you've got a giant forefinger up to the operation of this committee. It has now been to the Senate to get orders. And I accept that you have a case on your commercial confidential uh, position and all the rest of it. But in the ordinary course of this committee's uh, activity, uh, I personally, as the chair, and I'm sure there are other members of the committee who feel the same way, the defence has been absolutely obtuse, arrogant, dismissive, and contemptuous of the work of a Senate committee duly given a reference by the Senate. So I'd like you to put on the record, you know, what the department's view is in respect to that statement. Well, uh, Senator, I, I, of course, I'm, I believe that the department very much respects the appropriate, the appropriate role of the Senate to conduct these uh, inquiries and to oversight and, and hold the department to account. Senator, I believe that we've, we've come to a view about uh, material which uh, uh, should be, which the department should make available to the uh, to the committee conduct to conduct its inquiry. Uh, Senator, I, I, I feel that we continue to approach our, our responsibilities to be held to be open to to account in in a very professional way, and I'm I'm very disappointed that you would. Uh, take the view that we've held this uh, committee in, in, in contempt, Senator. That's, not, that's certainly not my approach to this, uh, this work or the, uh, or the approach of my colleagues in the department. Well, we have a, you know, a, a, a fairly uh, long-running timeline and summary of the committee's request for information and your responses, and they don't meet the bar. I mean, publicly available information was denied to the committee. Other cases, you've redacted publicly available information. What do you say to that? Is that the level of performance of your department? Um, Senator, I'll just say that I Chair, if, if, if I can, uh, my name's Francesca Rush. I'm the General Counsel Commercial of the Department of Defence. And um, I might actually ask Mr Dalton to answer this question. I think the, the request for information included some public information, but not uh, the majority of the information was actually not in the public domain. Perhaps Mr Dalton can, can talk to that. Just on the record, Chair, that just so that everyone listening understands, we are talking about documents that the committee has asked for and agreed to receive in confidence. So the committee is not asking for information uh, that you might consider sensitive to be placed on the public record. Okay, and that's the context in which everyone should answer questions here. Go ahead, Mr Dalton. Uh, um, I think the, the department has been with the committee. We've attended eight and a half hours of public hearings. We've um, We've responded to 64 questions on notice, um, and I think our testimony equates to about 88 pages of hansards. So I think we have been where we can, um, certainly. Um, we are talking about a limited number of documents that go to the heart of uh, commercial confidence data around um, Australian industry capability. These documents set out sensitive details on the structure of Defence, including risks, our Indigenous defence capability, and our specific plan for 
progressive aspect. The document is still with the plans and processes to transfer sensitive knowledge to the Australian industry and cyber security. The disclosure of these plans would also likely discourage future tenders from fully participating in our Australian industry, uh, industry program. It would undermine the ongoing procurement processes of, and the Commonwealth's ability to achieve value for money outcomes. Um, our ability to, to secure Look, I can understand what you're saying, and I think the department's been consistent in, in, that, uh, in that sort of response, but how does that go with the ongoing examination of contracts and scrutiny of, any, of expenditure, which is, uh, and the implementation of Australian capability plans and the utilisation of local content and supply chains, which has been duly authorised by the Senate? So if we can't get the information to, to complete the report, and we accept that it can be done in camera, as Senator Patrick has said. You know, our alternative is, at the end of question time every day, is to demand the minister come and make an explanation. When the minister doesn't make an explanation, we suspend standing orders, waste the legislative time of the government for a period of time on every consecutive sitting day. That's one of the responses that could be, uh, you know, coming out of this sort of frustration that the committee feels. We can demand the minister that hasn't responded in 30 days to come and make an explanation, and when they decline to do so, suspend standing orders, have a debate, lose the debate, but you steal 20 minutes of legislative time off the government every day, every sitting day. And that's the frustration that's growing on this committee, because uh, it's been apparent to me in the short time I've been here that all committees eventually work collectively or collegiately with the department and get a productive evidence-based report. But if you won't give us the evidence, we can't go much further. And it becomes very frustrating when we look at other um, sideways options of bringing the matter to an issue. So uh, how do you say that your contribution then, Mr Dalton, um, goes with the terms of reference? Is there no way forward here? Or are you saying you can't tell us what we want to know? Well, I think, I think uh, Chair, that we have been cooperative. Um, what we're talking about is a limited number of documents. Um, we have been open and transparent with, about the costs, the expenditure across the shipbuilding program. What we're talking about is the pre-tender Australian industry capability plans and the ones that are then subsequently contracted. There are public versions of those plans available uh, and they've been made available. And, and in an effort to try and bridge the gap, we have actually provided the committee with the, the original documents, but with the sensitive information redacted. And, and we maintain the view that that information is not in the public interest to be put into the public domain. It's not to be put into the public domain, uh, Mr Dalton. I've, I, I've explicitly stated that this is, uh, docu these are documents that are to be uh, put before this committee in camera. So please, uh, I'd, I'd ask you to reflect on your evidence in respect of the, the statement you just made. We are not asking for this information to be put in the public domain. Please refrain from suggesting that. So I'll just go to two specifics. So on the 17th and 24th of February 2020, and now we're approaching those dates in 2021, the committee um, requested in an unredacted form, the Naval Group AIC plan submitted under the competitive evaluation process and the Vale Group draft AIC plan and AIC strategy. These documents were not provided. So it goes back to that far ago. I mean, what, why couldn't we get those two plans? Why? We're officials, we work for the government of the day through our minister, and our minister's view is it's not in the public interest. Okay. So it's your ministers declared that they're not to be provided to the committee. Is that your evidence? Well, I think it's certainly my evidence, the minister's view, that they're not in the public interest. On advice from the department, I presume? I think the secretary has made it clear that the advice is more broad than, the, than just the Department of Defence. So, so for a taxpayer out there where there's a budget, there's an appropriation of money for defence and projects, 
And then listening to this, when someone's trying to evaluate how that money's allocated, spent or acquitted, um, it's commercial incompetence? Who, who no, owns the money? We haven't, we haven't said that at all, Senator. Um, well, why can we, we look at it? Well, we, what we're actually talking about here is the uh, contracted RC plans. That's not related to, well, they're a small part of the overall contract. The Senate has oversight of the budget that we spend and where that money goes. Well, you know, the reason you're here today is because we have, from our Secretariat, a long series of um, prevarications, non-replies, um, refusal of requests for information. Where is the way forward here? Are you expecting the committee just to shut up shop and say, oh, well, defence must be right? The Secretariat Why? must be right. We, we, despite the fact that there's a duly uh, voted on reference from the Senate, we can't look there. Is that what you're expecting us to do? Well, Senator, all I can say is it, may, it remains the department's view that it's not in the public interest of these plans. Okay. Mr Dalton, um, this information will come to a committee of senators who will review the information in private. Are you saying you do not trust the uh, senators to receive this information and hold it confidential? I'm not saying that at all, Senator. Okay, so what what's the basis of your claim that it would cause harm? It's coming to a committee of the Senate consisting of senators and, secret and the secretariat. Uh, uh, the, Senate, the committee has agreed to, ho to hold the documents in confidence so that we can examine the naval shipbuilding program in accordance with the terms of reference uh, sent to us by the, by the Senate. Do you, tr do you not trust the members of this committee? All I can say, Senator Patrick, is it remains the department's view that it's not in the public interest to release it I want you to explain why you think it is not in the public interest. I've just explained the circumstances around uh, uh, the circumstances in which we wish to have these dis uh, these documents disclosed. I understand that you have advanced a public interest immunity claim. Note that the Senate has rejected that claim and there's a resolution of the Senate in 1975 that says ultimately it's the Senate's decision, not, not the executive's. I simply want you to explain how you think the balance of interest lies in not disclosing <coughs> these documents in confidence to the committee. Well, again, it goes back to the department's view that, it's, um, that these are sensitive documents that cover a range of issues relating to how the project was, was that, that remains the department's view. Okay. So look, we, we appear to be heading towards a considerable sort of impasse here and I think it's worth noting that the source of the power that, um, that the Senate is relying on is the Senate possesses this power through section 49 of the Constitution which provides that the powers of the House of Commonwealth Parliament are until declared by the Parliament the powers of the UK House of the Commons at the time of the establishment of the Commonwealth in 1901. These powers undoubtedly include the power to call for documents. In 1987, the Commonwealth Parliament declared its powers through the Parliamentary Privileges Act 1987, Section 5, which provided for the continuation of these powers in force under Section 949 of the Constitution. And what information can the Senate ask for? There are no limits on the documents which may be ordered or tabled. There are no exceptions or exemptions for cabinet submissions or national security documents or other classes of documents for which governments have traditionally claimed public interest immunity or for the meaning of this term, see below. There are no requirement that a document be one that is already in existence. So we, we're getting advice from the clerk of the Senate and we've taken action in the Senate and we're no further advanced. And you've come here today basically saying exactly the same thing. You can't have it. Something has to give here. Something, Mr Moriarty, needs to break this impasse so as the committee can go on and do its careful and evidence-based work and the minister can stop being, um, have her uh, time impinged upon. And reputation. Exactly. So can we, can we, What's, how do we get through this impasse? We believe, and we're advised by the clerk of the Senate, 
through the Secretariat that we're on very solid ground here. And what we're asking for is not unusual. But you seem to be taking a very different view. Senator, if I could, it, it remains the view of the Minister and the Government that it is not in the public or national interest to produce these plans beyond the public versions that provide an overview of the plans, but without the sensitive commercial information. Okay. All right. Well, there's the impasse. We'll, we'll see where we go in respect to that. And I mean, as I've said to you previously, one option is that the opposition could frustrate the work of the Defence Minister on a daily basis in the next session of Parliament. At the end of question time, every day we could request the same answer. It won't be forthcoming. We'll suspend standing orders, you know, have a debate for a while, lose the debate, and there's another two hours of government legislative time uh, away. And the minister's continually in the spotlight for not giving a committee of the Senate information. Is that where we're going? Senator Patrick, do you have any... Uh, Thank, you. Thank you. Sorry, Sorry. Sorry. Senator Sorry. Donald, can I just, just clarify, if the documents have been provided uh, to the committee confidentially, is that right? Redacted documents have been provided well, to right. the committee. Is, is this discussion one that could be progressed you know, in camera, that we can progress it? Because I'm sure we're all keen to progress. I, I think the Secretary is saying we're not getting them. That's my understanding. Is that am I wrong there? Look, Your evidence is we're not getting that information. Chair, I, I, as I've said, I have I have been informed the views of the minister and, and the government. I, I mean, some of these matters are, are, are matters for the for the government uh, and 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 for the minister rather than officials of the department. But I I, I have uh, provided the uh, committee with the be my best view on, on, on the guidance that I've been given by the Minister for Defence, that, that it remains the view of the Minister and the Government. <coughs> so, Senator MacDonald, does that clarify your point? Yeah, thank you. Senator Patrick. Thank you, Chair. So I'm just going to um, start perhaps going a little bit broader because I do have a broader concern in respect of uh, the openness that the Department of Defence has had with the Senate over the last uh, four or five years, in fact. And it's my proposition that the Department of Defence has been fettering the Senate in respect of the job it is required to do, which is oversight of the very programs that you administer. And I understand some of them aren't going well and you don't necessarily want a lot of scrutiny, but uh, that, is our, that is our role. Um, and it's on that basis, uh, I, I know Senator um, Gallagher has uh, indicated uh, perhaps one, one course of action. I'll just uh, forewarn you that I've got a letter, a draft letter here a matter of privilege relating to the provisions of information to the committee. That's my intended pathway. I'm, I hope we can find some resolution before this gets referred. Um, I'll also re remind you a, a, again of the resolution of the Senate. In, in respect of that, um, there has been uh, an order for production for these documents. You have advanced a public interest immunity and you are quite entitled to do that. The Senate considers that uh, public interest immunity and in this instance has rejected it. And from that point on, you are basically verging on contempt. The minister is verging on contempt. That's the way the system works. Um, uh, that's the way. That's the, the lawful uh, position, and, and we're trying to find a pathway to resolve that. Um, I want to go back to uh, 2016, and Chair, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to table a document that was has been tabled in the Senate by the Minister of Defence, but I would like to put it before the witnesses. Fine. So I just. Uh, So back in 2000, and uh, on the 19th of April 2016, the and I accept you were not the secretary then, but uh, back back in those uh, in that uh, on that day, the Senate made an order, and Mr. Samet will remember this, uh, an order for the tabling of documents commissioned by Macroeconomics Proprietary Limited in relation to the C1000 project. The minister responded, and. Mr Moriarty, I'd really appreciate it if you could put on the record what the Minister has said in Para 2. If you'd read that for, to the committee, please. Just the second paragraph, beginning with consistent. Certainly, Senator. 
the, the, the second paragraph uh, begins with, consistent with my previous statements to the Senate, the documents in question were brought into existence for the purposes of the Cabinet's consideration of the future submarine program. Okay, so in effect, there was a Cabinet in confidence claim made over that document. Is that your understanding of what that, that statement says? So here is that document. Okay, this is the a preliminary analysis of the economic impact of future submarines based on the experience of the Collins program conducted by macroeconomics.com.au. Any idea how a senator could be stand, sitting in a committee room with a cabinet in confidence document in his hands? Any thoughts on how that happens? No. I, I, no well, I'll tell you how it happens. The, the senator, as a, uh, in fact, it was, I'll give the credit to Senator Xenophon, made an FOI request for it. And a ruling was made by the Information Commissioner, having looked at the evidence, noting there are two tests, not just something goes to Cabinet, but its dominant purpose at birth must be for uh, submission to Cabinet. You'd be familiar with that in the context of legal professional privilege. It was found that it was not Cabinet in confidence. Now, did someone lie to the Senate? There's a statement by the minister that did this document was cabinet in confidence. Did someone lie to the, minister, to the minister? Did the minister lie to the Senate? How is this, how did that happen? I note the silence for the hand side. Mr Moriarty, how did that happen? Uh, Senator, I'm, I'm not aware of the circumstances or, or, around either the the claim or, or Well, or I put to you that it was a false claim, okay, and that that is, and I'm going to roll out a whole range of examples of, the, of this, where the Department of Defence advanced a false claim, not un, perhaps not understanding uh, the, the, the law, and fettered the operation of the Senate. This was withheld from the Senate for a number of years, whilst it was dealt with under FOI. I'm happy to move to the design and mobilisation contract. Mr Samet will have, uh, have uh, a uh, yeah, strong recollection, recollection of this, no doubt. Um, <clears throat> on, the, on the 9th of October 2016, the Senate made an order for the production of the design and mobilisation contract signed between the Commonwealth of Australia and DCNS on the 30th of September 2016. It was refused to the Senate on the grounds that it was commercially uh, confidential and involved national security elements. Okay, I have that document. Do you know how I got that document? No, I do not. Sir. Okay, I got it under FOI. So it was withheld from the Senate for false reasons. And then, then uh, finally, when Mr Rex Patrick goes off and, and asks for it under FOI, it's provided, albeit I'll accept in redacted form. Can you see the pattern building? On the 4th of September 2017, uh, the Senate made an order for the production of the future frigate contract. Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll correct myself, the future frigate tender. It was refused to the Senate. Do you want to know how I have a copy of it? You can take a guess. There's a patent building. It was put before an independent commissioner who found that the claims of defence were simply false. They didn't stack up. I might move to um, uh, uh, another contract. Not another contract, another document. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask that we table this document, uh, Chair. It's actually been tabled in the Senate just recently. So this is a, uh, a, a, a document entitled the Auditor General's Report Number 6, 2018-19. Army Protected Mobility Light, confidential report in issued under 
paragraph 37 of the Auditor General's Act. So to give some background, uh, the, the auditor commenced an audit into the Hawkeye vehicle. It was commenced in 2017. At some point, uh, very early on in, in uh, uh, January in, in uh, 2018, Talis Australia made an application both to the federal court for an injunction, but secondly to, to the Attorney General seeking the issuing of a Section 37 certificate to prevent certain information in the audit report being made public, being tabled in the Senate. Now, um, uh, the, the Attorney General sought advice from both the then um, Minister for Defence and Minister for Defence Industry, and uh, I don't have the exact date, but some uh, sometime thereafter, Defence wrote to um, the Attorney General providing its perspective on, on, uh, on things. It was a commercial claim originally. After that letter, the Attorney General issued a Section 37 certificate uh, on the basis that A, it was commercially sensitive and B, it was national security sensitive. Okay, if you dispute any of those facts in, in general, um, please, please uh, speak up. Um, so, the defence advocated for a certificate to be issued and it was duly issued, which meant this parliament could not have access to this document. Okay, now, I have this document, it's been tabled. Any guess on how I got it? Take an educated guess, Mr Moriarty. Uh, I assume, Senator, that it was under FOI. It was under FOI. Went to the AAT, the, the Prime Minister's office was represented by barristers for the AGS, from the AGS, and the full document has now been released to me, actually with exceptions that I agreed to, relating to, 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 uh, to a few uh, numbers, commercial numbers. Um, I'd like you to turn to, pa uh, to page, um, to page 6 of the document. This document was provided to the Prime Minister and has yellow redactions, or yellow highlighting where the redactions were made. You might see under the heading conclusions in paragraph 10, there is a, um, uh, a short sentence that is redacted, or that was redacted, the highlighted um, sentence. Can you please read that to me, Mr Moriarty? Chair, with your, with your permission, Chair, um, the, uh, the highlighted sentence reads, Senator, defence has not clearly demonstrated that the acquisition provides value for money as it did not undertake robust benchmarking in the context of a sole source procurement. End of sentence. Thank you very much. Can you tell me how, look, I accept this is an embarrassing finding of the, the Auditor General for those that may not have understood what, uh, what he was saying there. He was saying you went to one contractor and you issued a contract, and you did so without benchmarking the price against what might have been um, in the public domain. That's essentially what that sentence, is, sentence says. Can you, um, with all your knowledge of, of uh, national security issues, can you please describe to me or explain to the committee how that sentence could be national security sensitive? Embarrassment, embarrassing, yes, I find great difficulty in understanding how that is national security sensitive. So please explain that to me. No, I have no comment to make on that, Senator. I mean, clearly... So you can't provide an explanation to this committee? No, Senator, I just said I have no comment to make on that. I mean, it's been decided that it would be, it would be pr provided and the department accepts that it's been provided. Well, okay, so the attorney, the Auditor General at the time insisted to the JCPAA mm -hmm. that you know, after the certificate was issued, he wasn't allowed to talk mm -hmm. about it. It's strangely still not allowed to talk about it because the Section 37 certificate is still in play. Mm -hmm. He said to the committee, there is nothing in the redacted portions of this, mm -hmm. uh, this report that, are, that is national security sensitive. A deputy president of the AAT has found uh, the same and the 
Prime Minister's office has written to me saying that they uh, do not intend to challenge this in the federal court, and it's been released to me. I want to understand, this goes to, uh, this goes to your ability to properly assess your judgment to be able to assess what is and what is not sensitive. How did you ever come to the conclusion uh, in your advocacy to the Attorney General that that sentence was nationally security sensitive? Again, for the hand side, no, uh, a lot of silence in respect, in respect of answering these questions. Um, Senator Patrick, if I might be able to give Thank some you. give some guidance here. Uh, Francesca Rush, General Counsel. Um, in relation to this particular redaction, um, we understand that it's, it's the subject of the Attorney General General's decision on ongoing an ongoing review. I'm aware, but the ma the matter was not really an issue for the department in that context. I, I can't talk to the national security issue. No, no. Uh Absolutely, on evidence before the, before the committee, both the Attorney General and the Auditor General, sorry, not this committee, the JCPAA, in submissions, stated that Defence made a submission to the Attorney General. Prior to that point, there were no national security concerns. Talis had raised commercial concerns, no national security concerns. Defence supported that view. How did you support that view? Senator, I can't talk to that. I don't think Make anyone can answer that question because it is clearly an embarrassing statement that you sought to cover under national security, uh, under a national security blanket, and that is most inappropriate. You withheld, had you sought to advocate to hide this from a committee of the Senate to stop the Auditor General from tabling this. I can go to the next sentence as well. Sorry, Senator Pack, can I just intervene at that point? Can, Ms Rush, can you actually tell me what is the protocol then? So the Australian National Audit Office, I'm a great fan of, provided immensely valuable information to senators for decades, um, produces a report and somehow you're the legal person, the general counsel, are you? I, I am, Senator. So, what is the protocol or procedure that, that the Australian Audit Office, funded by the taxpayer, has its work made confidential or restricted in access? How, how does that happen from a defence's point of view? S Senator, I can't talk to the specific Well, report. who can? Who can? Who can tell us what happened? Someone? Mr Moriarty? Can you tell us why that publicly funded, excellent work was not available to the Senate and the public. How did it end up in, you know, obscure land where someone had to go and get it uh, released under FII or the rest of it? Uh, Senator, look, I'd, I'd, I'd want to talk to uh, Depsec Kasji and the people responsible for land programs, but I think this issue was being pursued by the Attorney General's department, not necessarily. Well, it's the... embarrassing, but I mean, why was it covered up? It's out now. It's still embarrassing. So you're the secretary of the department. If you turn your stuff up, own up, get on, explain it, and move along. Hiding it has made the well, problem bigger, not smaller. Yeah. Well, Senator, if it was a sole source procurement, that would uh, that would have been a decision taken by government. You know, the, it, that's it's 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 the government's prerogative, I think, to to okay. take some of these decisions depending on how it wishes to pursue particular acquisitions. Okay. So, so if I read that is the minister makes a decision to go with Tali's, audit office finds it wasn't a particularly bright decision, so we cover it up. Is that how it works? Or am I being too simple here? Uh, I think, Senator, if my reading of it is it says defence has not clearly demonstrated that yeah. the acquisition provides value for money. It's not saying that we stuffed up. Uh, that, that, that is not hmm. how I read that text. It's saying, and I think the defence, defence would accept that view, that defence has not clearly demonstrated that the acquisition provides value for money, as okay. it did not undertake robust benchmarking in the context of a sole source procurement. Okay, so that breaches your own procurement requirements, which are your purvey, is that correct? No, but Senator, I, I, I regret that you know that the department uh, always um, should should undertake um, the the work it, it can do to demonstrate uh, value for money. We work with the uh, ANAO to try and 
uh, make sure that we do that, where they recommend that we take action to improve our processes. Those, those actions are almost always accepted by the department, and, and we appreciate the ANAO's contribution to making us a better organisation. But that, the, the, the sentence there, defence has not clearly demonstrated I, I, th I accept as Secretary of the Department, I need to do better to make sure my department clearly demonstrates what it is involved. But that, that department is not suggesting, I think, Senator, that we stuffed up. Okay. Senator Patrick. Irrespective of that, you know, I, I, the point I'm making is that's a finding or a recommendation or an opinion of the Auditor General, mm. okay? And you may think it's good, bad or otherwise, and we may all read it differently. Mm. I'm trying to understand how you determined that that was national security sensitive. I've got the dates of the letter here, and your, uh, it's, it's, the, the references to these are to the Defence Secretary, so you were engaged in this process. Okay, so I've got, uh, I can give you the dates if you like, but uh, uh, ultimately ended up with uh, Defence provided with a draft of uh, Section 37.5 Confidential Order Report on the 2nd of uh, August. Uh, as was TALIS, written defence responses on the public uh, and confidential reports were received. Um, uh, there is, but uh, there, there's a series of interchanges between your office and the Attorney General's office in respect of these audits, and indeed in, in, in the usual course of action between the Auditor General and defence. Now, it got to the situation where defence had cleared, defence had cleared the Auditor General's report in draft form for, from, uh, you know, of any uh, uh, national security concerns. TALIS then made its application, and then you guys weighed in behind it somehow. Totally unexplainable. But this, look, this goes to the credibility of defence in respect of being able to make good judgments in relation to national security. Time and time again, when challenged, you simply don't, um, you, you simply don't stand up to scrutiny on this. You don't stand up to legal scrutiny on this. That's my concern. I could go to the, the, the next one, the next sentence. Publicly available information suggests the non-audited per unit uh, price difference between Hawkeye and the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle exceeds the price difference advised to the government at second pass. Now, whether we accept um, uh, that as a criticism, as a, as a, as a nudge, whatever, the point is that should never have been held confidential from the parliament. And if you can offer an explanation to the to this committee as to why that was sensitive, noting this was redacted under your signature, your response to the attorney general, you wrote to the attorney general and said that this was national security sensitive. I want you to answer how that is national security sensitive. Senator, I, 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 uh, I certainly take the view that um, it may have been, uh, it certainly may have impacted on export opportunities, but I, I would need to consult with the relevant officers in the land area to provide that detail. We, we, I, have, I don't have any officers from the land uh, capabilities with us today. But you are an officer of the Department of Defence. Maybe yeah. Mr Samet, who's not, I accept he's not an expert on land vehicles, no. uh, but he's very experienced on the classification yeah. of documents. He comes across yeah. secret and top secret and confidential documents all the time. Maybe he could offer an opinion as to how that could possibly be national security sensitive. No. That's my point. You don't actually have to be an expert to, to understand that that is not sensitive, might be embarrassing, but it's not sensitive. Do you want to have a look at Mr Salmon? I, I, don't think it's, I don't think it would be appropriate for Mr Salmon to comment on well, this. Well, again, I think because he simply wouldn't be able to offer an explanation, hmm. I, I put it to you. All right, I'll move on. Uh, I've made a request, and this is again, uh, I don't want to agitate outside of the, the, the naval shipbuilding, but it's relevant to the way in which defence is approaching uh, security. Um, I made a request of the PBO to basically have a look at um, your cash flow expenditure in respect of acquisition in the out years. 
Are you familiar with that request? I, I'm not personally, Senator, but uh, officers of the department in the appropriate areas may be aware of, of that request. Okay. Senator, can you clarify which program that, that was relating to? All of them. So in the DCP, or sorry, in the uh, uh, Defence Capability Plan, I think it is, that you, you lay out all of the projects, uh, uh, sorry, the investment uh, plan. Help me out, Mr. Summit. The integrated investment. Thank you very much. The integrated investment plan lists all of the projects, all of the major projects, and gives a cash flow. Mm -hmm. Okay, gives a, but it's very, very um, uh, coarse in terms of its its response. I'd like to table another document, uh, another set of documents. This is a publicly available uh, document from um, from Defence. Mm -hmm. And I've got two others. They're mark sensitive, but they are only sensitive because they are my requests to the PBO. Uh, Chair, you'd be familiar with uh, with with the the programs, the, uh, the the way in which the PBO handles things. So here's some more. Here's some more. Senator Patrick, it, it would. It is it appropriate to organise a time for the, 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 the best placed officers to come and talk? Because we're, we are asking about, like the Chief well, Finance Officer uh, is relevant to well, this, the, the DEPSEC has G. It's not actually the point. I'm not actually going to go, I'm, I'm not I'm not actually gonna go to that. Yeah. Um, but if you look at the acquisition yeah. cross, costs for 2020 um, and 2021, in each of these defence supplied documents, or at least uh, this information was provided to, to um, uh, the PBO. Uh, you can see in att attachment A on, uh, on the landscape document that uh, the total acquisition plans are 7.8 billion. Uh, on uh, the uh, full uh, uh, portrait document, you'll see the numbers 20 billion. These are defence numbers. And again, that differs to what you've put in the public domain. So I, as a senator, look at that. You, 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 I'm not going to ask you to explain the differences, just acknowledge that they are different. I, as a senator, want to understand what the cash flow is as a function of time, okay, so that I can see if there's a lump somewhere, and you would know that you then have to smooth these lumps, and the way you smooth them is you push projects right or left. That's how it's done. And I want to see, I want to see an analysis of the, 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 the cash flow. Now, I'm in the situation where I've requested the PBO conduct that task for me by going to each of the major projects, getting their raw data, and summing up as a function of time how much each project wishes to spend. I'm not seeking access to any individual project information. I'm simply seeking access to the total sum as calculated by the PBO using project manager's data uh, to establish what cash flow is. The Defence Department has refused to provide the PBO with this information, even though they are, there's a legal pathway for that to occur, and that any documentation provided to the, uh, the PBO is strictly confidential. On what basis would you refuse to provide the PBO with financial information on projects so that a senator can get a graph that simply says, for this year, this is the expenditure. For the next year, this is the expenditure. That's all that will pop out of the PBO. On what basis have you denied access to financial information to the PBO? Senator, I'll take that on notice and consult the relevant officers. Okay, because that's, this is going to come up again because there's going to be an order for production for you to supply that information to the PBO. The clerks have assured me that would be a, a, proper, uh, a proper order for production. Okay, I'd like to uh, now come back to... Um, uh, uh, Chair, I just wanted to have everyone understand, I'm painting a picture of a defence department that every step along the way, whether it be in terms of a response to the Attorney General uh, uh, in relation to a Section 37 certificate, whether it be in response to an order for production or orders of production in this, 
in this place for documents uh, and uh, or uh, a simple request to the PBO, the Defence Department is taking uh, a, a very, very liberal and, in my view, incompetent and improper uh, uh, approach hiding behind commercial sensitivity and, and security. Most improper. That's essentially the proposition I'm putting to the, to the, to the chair. But I'd, I'm happy to come back to the individual documents, but you can Senator perhaps go Patrick, somewhere else if you want to. Add on to that. I, I spent a, a number of years as chair of Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade uh, references. And um, we always uh, had commercially sensitive or, 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 you know, in the Veterans Affairs area, there was uh, material provided in camera, voluminous amounts of material providing in camera uh, for senators, senators to go and sign in, view the material, strictest confidentiality was observed. And, you know, it's quite extraordinary that when we look at scrutiny of public money, which is a whole lot less sensitive in my view than, you know, Veterans Affairs and some of the defence issues we dealt with, uh, we can't get the information. And I, I, I just don't think a taxpayer out there, knowing the size of the defence budget, would want the Senate to walk away from appropriate scrutiny of prudent expenditure of taxpayers' money. And we're in a considerable impasse here, Mr Moriarty, where you are claiming that the government, your, your department, cannot provide the taxpayers, through us, with appropriate information in terms of expenditure. That's a really critical issue, which I don't think you've, you've satisfied the committee of as yet. Senator Patrick. I'll go back to an OPD that's related to submarines, and I don't mind if you ask, answer this or Mr Samad answers this. And I'll concede that this matter is before uh, the AAT. Um, the Senate uh, uh, asked for um, a, uh, the, the total uh, cost or co total offer price uh, of DCNS, which is the successful, which was the successful winner in terms of the submarine uh, contract, to be but to be provided to the Senate. Okay, um, the Senate um, was refused um, that information. Okay, that's just a statement of fact. Um, I've been to the Information Commissioner, and the Information Commissioner has ruled in a in a ruling which is. Uh, Let's get the, the right one for council. Uh, it's the decision of the Information Commissioner, Rex Patrick and the Department of Defence number two, Freedom of Information 2020, AICMR 40 on the 13th of August 2020, where the Information Commissioner has ruled that, um, has ruled that uh, defence should hand over this document, this information to me, to Mr. Patrick, because it is not, in fact, uh, sensitive in the way in which def uh, defence thinks that, thinks that, is, that it is, is sensitive. Now, just for everyone listening, uh, what the, the Senate was after and what I am after under FOI is the total price of a fictitious submarine, a submarine that will never be built and on Talis's own evidence um, uh, is is, uh, uh, has completely changed since the commencement of the program, yet Defence has refused to provide this with the Senate. The Information Commissioner does not think that it is, uh, that it is, uh, um, uh, that it is sensitive. I concede it's before the AAT, um, but, and I'm not, obviously anything said here can't be adduced in evidence before the AAT, it's subject to privilege. I'm just trying to understand how you could possibly think that one number, the total price uh, of, of, of DCNS's offer, for which no one can really untangle, it's one number, could possibly be commercially sensitive. The tenders passed. If you look at the, uh, the instructions to witnesses uh, appearing before a parliamentary committee, it makes it very clear that, you know, if there's a tender going, you're entitled to make claims about you know, the sensitivity of those documents. But the tender's over. On what basis, and I'm saying this not in the context of the AAT matter, mm. in the context of the order for production of documents, how could you possibly deny that number 
to the Senate. What's well, Sen the basis of the public interest immunity claim? No. Senator, as you know, it is a matter of current appeal and I don't think it's appropriate for me to comment. Um, Ms Mr Moriarty, uh, the AAT is not a Section 3 um, uh, um, uh, court. It's not a constitutional court. It is a, an arm of the executive and it is not subject to, to subjudice. Okay, the subjudice provisions do not apply. I can refer you to a, a advice that was made public by, Ms, uh, by Senator Heffernan that, uh, that, uh, from the clerk that, that, uh, to, to that effect. Please don't make a subjudice claim. Okay? We're now talking about, uh, in relation to the OPD, the basis of, of, uh, of you suggesting, okay, advising the minister mm. that there would be harm in producing the number of a fictitious submarine that will never be built, that is not, uh, you know, that, that's already been, the, where the partner's already been selected. Isn't that the case, Mr. Samet? It was a fictitious submarine. The CEP document, the CEP, the intention was not to find a submarine, it was to find a partner. That's correct, isn't it? Greg Samet, uh, General Manager, Submarines Department of Defence. Um, it was to identify a partner. Um, across a range of considerations, cost being one of them, and the manner in which um, <clears throat> costs were um, developed and produced. Um, I, I would say that um, the, the pre-concept designs that were being developed um, were around our core capability requirements. Um, they, are, they are the same core capability requirements that we have today meaning that um, the pre-concept design um, was of a form uh, that is mirrored in the way the design is developing today. It is not the same submarine, is it? It's a pre-concept design. Yeah. It, so, it will so, never and, be and built, just, as, just as we are at um, a, a process now where we're designing a submarine through concept uh, and so forth, um, it is true that costs become refined. Um, but the, um, the, the issue is that it is information provided to a senator uh, in a tender environment and with the understanding that it will remain confidential. Well, let's um, go. And, and th th they, that was the basis upon which we, we sought the information and um, mindful also that there are current tender processes going on in which DCNS, sorry, Naval Group, um, is currently involved. M Chair, I'd like to table something uh, again. It's from an FOI. The release, uh, and you'd be familiar with this, and you can object if you like, but it's a contract for services to, uh, to support selection of an international partner for C1000. You can see it's got FOI redactions on it. I'm just going to table one page of that. It's available on the defence disclosure log, so I don't think there's any problems saving it here. If you could uh, pass that to Mr Samet. And this goes to the, I might say, this goes to the core of another document that is before the committee. Okay, so this is part of the contract associated with the, uh, the tender for the future submarine. Okay, um, can you go to paragraph 18.2? And read the first sentence, please, Mr. Samet. Could you read it out loud, please? The contractor acknowledges that as a Commonwealth agency, the Commonwealth is subject to legislative and administrative accountability and transparency requirements of the Commonwealth, including disclosures to ministers and other government representatives, parliament and its committees. Okay. I presume DCNS signed that document. You wouldn't have paid them, I think it was $10 million, you paid them to participate in the CP? Uh, $8 million. $8 and, million, Paul, and, thank you. And um, yes, they would, have, um, they would have signed that. So, going into the CP, they were fully aware that uh, any document provided to the committee could be subject to, uh, uh, to uh, disclosure to a minister, to a government agency, um, to uh, uh, the Parliament and its committees.
My point is, please don't come to this committee and suggest that um, that the reason you can't dis disclose these documents is, be is because uh, they were provided or, or they were they were sought. I might point as a, as a contractor del deliverable paid for by the Commonwealth under conditions in which it was explicitly. Uh, 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 they were explicitly advised that it could be disclosed to a committee of the parliament. What, what do you think that means? Noting, I've heard your opening statement, Mr Moriarty, that, that, uh, um, you, you know, that, that, that this is uh, sensitive information, you don't want it before a committee, and that somehow, uh, and I don't accept Mr Dalton's very commercially naive proposition that a company wouldn't tender, wouldn't supply information for a $20 billion contract on the basis that a docu document might be disclosed or has been disclosed to the Senate. That is a ridiculous proposition, should not be accepted by this committee. But I'd like to understand in the context of that statement, that contractual requirement with DCNS, why it is, and we can move away from the, the, the um, well, no, we'll stick with the DCNS uh, price, total price information. It's subject to an OPD. Why it is that you say it can't be supplied to a committee of the Senate or to the Senate? It explicitly states that, it, that, that, that is, a, that is a, a possibility and the contractor has signed up to that possibility. Senator, I'm, I'm happy to be corrected, but that does not negate our ability to understand if there are sensitivities and apply those um, those sensitivities to, to, to these matters. Um, so yes, it's acknowledged um, that some of that information will, will maybe, it says he may have to be provided. Um, at the same time though, um, there, are, there are requirements on, on us to consider if there are sensitivities um, such that um, such information um, um, may not be provided. Okay, but I'm going to your statement and Mr Dalton's statement that um, there, there's an expectation that these, these will be held confidential. The, the, the some, of the, some of the material, sure. some of the material centre, yes. And I think that's part of the premise on which we go to industry in seeking the clearest, most transparent um, to the department um, explanation of how they intend to tender. Have you sought with, a, a view with, from... With, with, without, without fear that what they share to do for the Australian Department of Defence would be shared with perhaps other international customers that may put um, those bids and the way they seek to approach them in jeopardy. Mr Samet, we're not asking for this to be disclosed in the public domain. An order for the production of documents would. Okay, some order... No. There are, the, the, these orders have been very carefully crafted, stating that they will go to a committee of the parliament. And it's done that way so that it doesn't have to be tabled in the chamber of the Senate, rather it is given to a committee who can protect it. And the order in relation to the documents we're talking about today specifically states that the, or, the documents are to be returned to the committee, not to the chamber. So no, I'm not, I, I don't know in detail what the order of production for document, I can't recall, I should sure. say, in detail what the order for production of documents said there, but I, I did, my, my understanding is it was not on the basis of the order for production of documents of the, um, the AIC plans. Well, in, in relation to this specific okay. issue you're asking about, right. which as you also point out is before the AAT. All right, fair enough. Uh, and look, I, I... Sorry, at that point, I'm, I'm really struggling here because can someone either give me a hypothetical case which demonstrates your view that you can't give us information, or can you construct a hypothesis that explains to me why the Senate can't do its work because of your commercial incompetence or, or whatever your immunity claim is? I mean, can someone say, look, this is why we're doing this? Because I'm struggling to understand why you're doing it. Because Senator Patrick's trotting out evidence that you've gone down a path which has been overturned by an independent body. Can someone have a go at it? Uh, and, and Chair, of course, and, and we, when, when an independent body that's 
uh, with, the, with the proper authorities makes a decision, we comply. I mean, occasionally we might appeal to exercise our appropriate mm -hmm. right of appeal, but, uh, Senator, I'd, I'd, I'd suggest that when, when the department has a finding against it, we make an information available. Um, um, you know, we, uh, we, we uh, absolutely respect the constitutionally and lawfully constituted right of, of, of agencies and bodies to come to views about what should be released, and the department complies with those. Okay. Oh, sorry. Well, oh, um, oh. I still don't understand why you're protecting this information, and no one's clearly explained to me the commercial imperatives for doing that. Does someone want to tell me why that is? Well, other colleagues may wish to comment, Senator, but certainly, certainly a, a number of companies do, do suggest to us if, 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 if a lot of information about what they're bidding is, is made public, and that's that they are very concerned about being, uh, information may, being made public, that it does impact on their commercial ability to prosecute other, other contracts. They're also worried that um, a number of their competitors get access to this information. They're, they're worried about people in their supply chain knowing what the upper limit or the lower limit that they might be prepared to, to go to. It, does, it certainly does constrain their commercial room to manoeuvre. And in some cases, it, it, I, I, would, I, would, I would suggest that it could lead to higher costs for the Commonwealth because some of this information does then impact on what people pursue in terms of prices for, for goods and services provided. But, okay. other colleagues but if you take the Tarly's example, then it's clearly worked in a, in a disadvantageous way to the taxpayer. Mm. Found by the audit office, not by me. Yeah. Can I just go to the, the, the order associated with the documents that we are directly referring to today? Um, the, the order affirms, and I'll, I'll just cut to the chase, orders for the department for the orders the minister for defense to comply with the order agreed to by the senate on the 6th of october 2020 by providing documents to the senate economics reference committee by the 12th of november 2020 these are not do documents that are going into the public domain in your conversations we, uh, you've, you've supplied i think it's uh, you know, about 10 or more you know, perhaps slightly more documents to this committee from various different um, commercial entities. Have you explained to those particular entities that the documents are coming to a committee of the Senate who have agreed uh, to accept them as confidential documents? Has that step been taken? I'll ask if Mr Dalton wants to comment on that, Senator. Uh, Senator, we, we have had ongoing discussions with all of the primes associated with this. They're, they're aware of the data. The, the, uh, our position remains that um, it's not in the public interest. We, we expect that... Mr Dalton, make... Mr Dalton, respectfully, that is not my question. I'm, I, I know what your claim is. I'm asking, has the, have the companies that you've gone to, are they aware that it is coming to a committee of the Senate? to be accepted in, in confidence, and on that basis, have they still objected to the Department of Defence as to its release to the committee under those the, terms? The, the Senate and the Primes have all, in fact, you know, the, the redactions were done in consultation with the Primes. They're their documents. So they... My question goes to the, the, what you've put to the, to the contractors. Have you put to them that this is a do, these documents if they were to come in unredacted form, would go to a, a committee of the Senate in confidence? Has that been put to the contractors? Simple question, yes or no answer? Not directly. Okay. So maybe that's the resolution to this impasse, is to uh, go to those, uh, to those players, noting it's not their choice anymore. The Senate has made its uh, determination on this, but in respect of breaking the impasse, Perhaps you can go to these companies and explain the situation as set out in the order. Is that something you're prepared to do, Mr Moriarty? Senator, I'm very happy, I'm very happy to have further discussions with my minister on how she would like us to proceed. Okay. I'd like to now go to um, uh, the, one of the documents that is before, before the committee. Okay. Now... Chair, sorry, can I just... 
clarify this because as a commercial operator, I am not trying to cut across you, Senator Patrick, and what you're trying to do, but as somebody who supplies data to government, yes, everybody understands there's transparency of process and decision making, but I just feel a bit uncomfortable that if I'm providing commercial and confidence um, details of my business operation, I certainly would not expect it to turn up in front of the Senate. Certainly the decision making process, the um, you know, a whole lot of uh, the tech of, of the um, business case, but certainly not commercial in confidence detail about how you'll commit to it, how you'll supply it. I, I you know, let's just be practical. Well, if you're a business and you don't like that, you simply don't uh, operate off. with defence. Well, you, the defence is the biggest game in town. Okay, if you're and that's uh, the price you pay, and and it's clearly set out in the constitution and in the resolutions of the no, Senate no. and in the defence. Uh, procurement policies and in the contracts that go to people. No, I don't who... think it is clearly spelled out. I think well, transparency have a read of that, is. No, no, no. I'm just trying Order. to get to the technical. If we can bit, just allow sorry. Senator McDonald to finish her yeah. position, and then Senator Patrick, you can respond, and then we'll go back to the hearing. Thank you, Chair. So I'm just trying to clarify that there would certainly be details of what is supplied to defence that is technically and commercially different to providing a cake to um, hospitality. I mean, it is a, uh, this is the world that we live in where defence operates um, and has to be able to get uh, procurement from businesses that you know, provide by their very nature. Um, Watch the US Senate's okay. action. So, Senator okay. Patrick, do you have a right. contribution there? Just trying to be practical. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. All right, well, so we'll continue on. Um, I'd like to now table a, uh, a document um, which is the Australian Industry Plan, Capability Plan, provided to the Commonwealth under, uh, under a tender. It has been released, and I know you know this, Mr Sam, it's been released to me under FOI. Okay, so hopefully there's no objection to me tabling this document, making it available to the witnesses and the Chair. Thank now, you. I want to give you a bit of a history of this, this document. Uh, um, this, the, you know, it is the subject of an order to the committee. Um, and interestingly, these documents have been provided to the committee, or this document has been provided separately under the Senate processes. And I can't table that document because you've asked it to be held confidential. I've got this document here that I'm, I've got under FOI. It's on the defence disclosure log. And you have asked the Senate, this committee, to hold it confidential. Can someone explain that? Can we get the decision maker at least to explain how that protocol works? No, I'm not aware. Um, and I, I acknowledge, Senator, we, we provided this to you. Um, indeed, um, on the 7th of December, sorry, I beg your pardon, the uh, first on the 20th of December, 2019. So um, I'm not exactly sure why We'll take that well, that was done. Can other you than, see the trouble uh, I've got uh, with it, Secretary? Other, other than, other than um, it was included with a number of other documents. Sure. Um, and it, it may have been that, um, as all of those documents were provided to the Senate, um, at the committee, I beg your pardon, yeah. um, it, it was just included there. But I, I readily acknowledge that, that you have this under FOI as we, as we reached agreement to, to provide to you. Uh, on the 20th of December 2019. Okay, so I just want to go to uh, just a little bit of a history of this. When I first FOI this document, uh, um, the return from the original FOI was that the document didn't exist. I did an internal review, pointed a few things out that had been said in the Senate, because it's not a, uh, a tribunal where I can uh, use evidence from the Senate, and a document was found and it was provided to me completely redacted. Completely redacted. Mr. Samet, do you care to challenge that proposition? Um, as, as I recall, um, the, uh, the document, I think, was originally requested by Senator Xenophon. Yeah, sorry, I, I apologise. Rather than you. I might have been and behind the... the behind I, I suggest he... Yes, yeah, so yes, I do understand. He might have been advised yeah. to request the document um, yeah. by a, a particular advisor at the time, Senator. Yeah. But um, yes, um, 
I recall, and my understanding was it was for a final AIC plan. Hmm. Um, so, okay, so that, in, that explains in, the first in error. the in the definition of yep. what was being asked for. Such a document didn't exist. Okay, it was right. a proposal. Okay, that was clarified, um, as I recall, as we went through the process of doing that. Um, and um, um, indeed, uh, the internal review sought by Senator Xenophon at the time um, was, was based on there was confusion regarding the documents he was seeking, as we're, we're pointing out. So um, that was, um, that was, um, that was the, the case as you... As and you the results of the internal review, am I correct, it was completely redacted? It was identified as a document on the schedule in response to the FOI, but was completely redacted. Uh, the decision maker at the time, um, um, I understand, made, um, made a decision in terms of um, a number of issues. Um, it was used to inform government's decision um, and also um, a wide range of um, proprietary information flows in the document. Okay, but, but it was... It, my, my question goes to: It was denied. The access was denied in full. As I understand, that's what the decision maker okay. uh, agreed. Yes. Now so. I'll go now to you, Mr. Moriarty, and I, I accept this is trans, this is crossing, uh, going across FOI, but uh, into FOI, which doesn't have relevance in this in this uh, uh, in this building, but does go to your judgment or the judgment of your officials. You are the principal officer. Uh, uh, responsible for FOI for the Department of Defence, are you not? Oh, in, I, I'm the, as, as the Secretary, you know, those, those parts of the Department work, work to me, Senator. Exactly. Well, I, I pointed out actually in the Act, you are, you know, this, you are the, the Secretary is the Principal mm. Officer, okay? Um, so you are ultimately responsible for the way in which uh, FOI is discharged within your Department. Mm. I presume you are aware that um, the FOI Act provides a legally enforceable right for access to information. It's a positive right, which means that um, instead of saying, what can I give someone, you are supposed to approach it from saying, I have the documents, is there something I shouldn't give them? That's the, pro that's the way it's supposed to work. I can see your legal counsel is, is acknowledging that. Okay. So I have great difficulty in... Um, in the context of an FOI request, again, Chair, the relevance to the committee is it goes to judgment. In, um, uh, in trying to understand how this could be harmful, this statement here, which is uh, on page, um, which I can't get the page number, um, page four, a statement like, um, in this Australian industry plan, DCNS describes how we will maximise involvement of Australian industry in its procurement process, processes in all three phases of the Future Submarine Project and ensure Australian sovereignty in the sustainment phase of the Future Submarine Program. Now, if I look at that from the view of someone has a positive right, I, I therefore need to find some reason not to give that to them, I can't see how anyone would deny, could deny could deny that. Just says DCNS is um, trying to maximise Australian industry involvement. That was a, a, an objective of the project, and that it you know, acknowledges that we were after sovereign industry capability. How could that possibly be considered sensitive? It was it was withheld from me in, at first instance. Again, silence. I'll move on. Um, there. Well, no, no, I think we need a response. The question was put. How can that be considered sensitive? Well, I think there were a range of, um, of reasons that the original decision maker might have applied, including the fact that um, it contained deliberative, it, it, the nature of the document was deliberative in terms of informing the government, was the view taken by the decision maker at the time. Um, as, you, as, you, as you were probably were going to go on to point out, um, um, Senator, that, that did go up before the, uh, the Information Commissioner. Um, those, um, th th through a normal review process, um, and in that process, um, 
a redacted version was released, as, as I recall. Yeah, halfway uh, through the information commissioner review, a, a version yes, of it was yes, released. Yes, on the on the 11th of May of 2018. The point, I guess in some sense the point of this is this is a tooth pulling exercise which is exactly what the Senate is trying to do here because the, the, Mr Moriarty I, I put it to you the same obligation exists in respect of documents that uh, when you consider whether there's public interest immunity is that you need to look and say the Senate has asked for these, they are entitled to them, only in exception, except, exceptional circumstances do I advance a public interest immunity. That's how, that's how it's supposed to work isn't it? Senator, and, and, and the officers who are involved in this work are directed to absolutely comply with the law. Okay, so let's work through this. You've got a situation where, in terms of advancing a public interest immunity, that involves balance. On one hand, you've got the interests of a commercial company. On the other hand, you've got a uh, $89 billion project. Okay? Um, the, w funded by the taxpayer. Now, in this instance, we've got a project that, uh, that has gone from $50 billion outturn to $89 billion outturn. Hugely, a huge blowout. That's $39,000 million of blowout, $2.8 million per day just in the blowout cost from the $50 million outturn indicated by the Secretary of Defence in 2015 to what Mr Salmon has given in evidence to the Senate committee. So I understand you don't want any scrutiny over this particular project. You, 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 know, you don't want that. Do you know what $2.8 million per day could do in the education sector? Do you know what $2.8 million per day could do uh, uh, for disability, people with disabilities? Senator, um, in fairness, I, I think we explained at the last um, the last um, Senate estimates hearings um, um, about the way the sort of the program, the sort of program we are running today, did not reflect <clears throat> what was being stated previously um, about potential costs for a program um, in in the earlier time frame. We talked about the fact that um, we were um, we were developing a white paper. That white paper was developed uh, and and submitted. Uh, the decision. Uh, was to build 12 submarines, not eight. Uh, and also, the decision was being made to build those submarines in Australia. So the cost of the program that we have today, without going over evidence that we gave um, during the last, uh, the last hearings, was not a, not a case of us, you know, it, it's the, the issue that we are trying to hide that there's been a blowout of cost, I think is, is, is simply wrong. We have stated what the costs of the program of record is when the government decided to select Naval Group to build 12 submarines in Australia. And uh, I, I put it to you, uh, up until recently in the JCPAA major projects review reports, Defence used to always say, we're on time and on budget. We're, we're, we're within, the, within the budget. Without ever honestly stating, when it was approved, it was this budget. We've now subsequently had an increase in budget approved, and that's, why we're, that, that's the context in which we make the statement, we're on cost. See, Sorry, Mr. I don't Mr. understand Samet, your you point, Senator, in hmm. terms of... Uh, that's in, not your project. In, on in the terms of the cost of this program, hmm. and I think it's important to correct the record that there has never been an endeavour by this department to hide an increase in costs okay. as it relates to the future submarine program. Okay. How we have I... been clear in our evidence that the cost of the future submarine program was $50 billion constant at the time uh, Naval Group was selected. That's the entire program, by the way. Sure. That's not the contract value for Naval Group. Sure. And that remains the cost. Okay. In an outturn figures today, that is $88.5 billion. Now, now let, let me give you an example. The, the, you have been asked publicly to break down those costs, and you advanced a, 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 a immunity or basically suggested, but I don't think it went to a formal public interest immunity, but you said, I've got difficulty that, with that because it's commercially sensitive. However, you offered me a private briefing. You turned up in my room and you broke those figures out uh, for me, okay? And that's a private briefing which I've respected, and I put it to you that any senator would respect that, but that's analogous to what we're asking to happen here, which is the documents to be provided to the committee, and we will very respectfully do our work 
without revealing anything. I will point out that the Senate has the power to reveal things, but uh, uh, I'm not suggesting that uh, the committee couldn't reveal things. But in, in principle, the Senate is very responsible in that regard. Just as an analogy, um, I put that to you. Let's go to uh, the document again. Um, uh, let, let's turn to page... Um, page uh, 43. It's the page directly after a map of Australia with a number of different companies. There's a table in here that lists a number of companies. Sorry. Um, the table. Yes. Yes. Okay. So there's a table in here that lists a number of companies. Now, Mr. Samet, you'll recall that uh, this was redacted when provided to, to me uh, under the Information Commissioner decision that was made. Only as a result of the AAT and some disclosure that I made in the Senate did this, uh, d did this appear. So I'm putting to you that the, the initial position of the government was that, uh, let's look at that top line, air and surface detection, declared Australian suppliers are Sagem and Talus. And then it talks about other potential companies. Now, I'm, I'm trying to understand on what basis, noting that all these companies are known. All these companies are absolutely known. That Talus does uh, air and surface detection is advertised on their website. That Raytheon Australia has some involvement in that is absolutely, you know, they want you to know that. I'm trying to understand how you could possibly think that that table, and, and there are redactions, and I know what's under them, and you know that I know what's under them because I have the document in full, which I'm using for parliamentary purposes. Um, the, and I have responsibly not revealed, even though the Information Commissioner has said it's, it's, it's not, uh, it, it, none of it is sensitive. I just try to understand how you possibly think that information is sensitive. Name of a company and what they do. Seriously? So, Senator, what I would say is that um, it's not simply just the name of the company and what they do, it's whether they are potential contributors and therefore are they companies that Naval Group um, would, uh, would seek to engage with and negotiate with. But hang on uh, a second. And, and from Naval Group's perspective at the time, whether that would compromise their ability in terms of competing um, against uh, competing for um, for um, for the supply of equipment from various areas. Sorry, um, can that, I ask that, at this point is is this a delegated function, Mr. Salmon, or do you actually do it? Do you delegate this function of redaction and provision of information to a committee to a? There is a process, uh, Senator, whereby um, redactions are done by accredited decision makers. And who instructs those people of the... They, 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 they conduct this, um, taking due cognizance of um, third parties, which is part of the process, and what those third parties are offering as uh, grounds on which um, certain redactions should be made for what they believe to be commercially sensitive. So, so the evidence before this committee, and I, I think our Secretariat is, uh, shares some of the committee's frustration in that uh, they make a genuine request as per the committee's instruction for information. It goes to your department. It comes back in a redacted form when it's available publicly. Uh, there's no consistency across the board about the way that it's treated. And we end up uh, in a very frustrating position here. Now, of the four people here now, and one on, um, you know, on the ether, do you actually do this work or is it delegated to people? No in, no, in most cases we review the work, Senator, but I think we're talking about two processes here as well. You're talking about information provided under a parliamentary process and information um, provided through an FII process, which is what Senator okay. Patrick is well, referring to now. Setting aside the FII and they process, are different. so set aside that process. Let's just talk about the, the work the of the committee. The common element is judgment. The work of the sides. committee. How is it possible 
that we're in this situation now where we're requiring a minister to make an explanation about why they won't give the Senate legitimately requested information. Someone at the table here or on the ether should have an explanation for that. Are you instructing your officers to comply with the Senate or not? Or are you saying, do your best endeavours and we'll see what happens? Mr uh, Dalton. Senator, um, the, there is a difference between the processes here and an FOI process. An FOI process has... Well, set aside the FOI process. What about the legitimate request from the Senate Economics Committee? The issue here is that these documents, um, we work with the owner of the documents, so the prime contractors, um, in order to, to, to come to a conclusion about what is the sensitive information. And that goes to all of those issues that we discussed before, Senator, around um, the issues around the, describing the industrial base in Australia, the gaps um, in our business industrial base. It goes to um, creating a list by the car. It goes to the ability of the primes to be able to have negotiations and generate a value for money outcome for them. So that the decision here was made in consultation with primes about the sensitivity of the information in those documents. Chair, if I could add, as, as I said before, the, the, the Defence Department officials have engaged with senior officers in the Department of Finance, the Attorney General's Department and the Department of, of Prime Minister and Cabinet. And determine that you're not going to cooperate with a legitimate request of the Senate? No, I, I can confirm that those departments support the position of the Department of Defence. So it doesn't change the fact right now you are in contempt of an order of the Senate. So the Senate has made its decision on this. I, I just want to go back to, if, if you wouldn't mind, Chair, I just want to go back to that, that first line. Uh, Mr Samet, you said that there might be sensitivities moving forward in terms of people that DCNS or now Naval Group want to negotiate with, but wasn't it a function of the CEP? Did, not you, did you not pay DCNS as it was then to engage Australian industry to, to talk and form relationships with companies here in Australia? So that's correct, isn't it? Not to talk and form relationships, to understand how they would approach and engage with Australian industry um, to, um, to maximise Australian industry involvement. Okay. So there was no requirement on any of the participants to form any particular relationships sure. with any members of industry. And if I read the table, it says evaluate Australian potential contributors. It doesn't say that they are mandated. The, one, the ones on the left say Jim and Talis, it says it declared Australian suppliers. Uh, on the right hand side it says these are potential contributors. How could you possibly think that puts Talis in a commercially disadvantaged... You mean group? Naval Group? Sorry, sorry, Naval Group, sorry, uh, apologies. Naval Group, how could you possibly think that that puts Naval Group in a commercially disadvantaged position? Because they happen to have labelled them as potential contributors. As I said, um, it. This requires third party consultation and a requirement to take into account the views of, um, of Naval Group as a, as a third party to this as to where they saw commercial sensitivities in terms of the way they would uh, structure their procurements going forward. But respectfully, and I'll look to, to the Council, I know the FOI uh, pretty well, you are required to consult but the decision is made by the Department not by Naval Group. If a Naval Group says something, you are allowed to test and, and examine that evidence, particularly noting your positive obligation, your positive obligation to establish an exemption. That's correct, Senator. Yeah. Yep. So um, just because Taylor says, I think that might Naval be sensitive, sorry, Naval Group, just because Naval Group says, I think that's sensitive, doesn't mean you take that on face value. And we don't always take it on face Okay, value, so you didn't take it on face value. Defence made this decision. I ask you again, how could the naming of these companies prejudice ta um, Naval Group's commercial position? It's 
So you know, there may be a range of reasons for that as to whether um, there would be other companies or whether these companies may believe that they were favoured because they were listed. Um, the time that was, um, was devoted to doing the work that is current in terms of identifying potential suppliers and so forth was naturally limited in a tender process. And the process going forward is much more, um, much more rigorous now, uh, as you would expect under the terms of the contract that we have put in place with Noble Group. Um, and I would suggest um, that there, will, there was no, there was probably an intention not to infer that there was any preferred supplier among Australian companies of particular, um, of particular capabilities. Okay, so. I would, I would offer that as a perspective. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. We enjoy the ability here to now look and see what's happened. You were of the view that, or the department was of the view that this disclosure would cause commercial harm to, uh, to Naval Group. This is in the public domain. Ha can you tell me of any harm that has come to Naval Group in respect of this particular disclosure? Well, we, we haven't gone through a number of procurements yet, so I can't answer that authoritatively, Senator. But, uh, perhaps you can go and ask a naval group whether or not uh, they've suf suffered commercial harm as a result of the release of this information. I suspect the answer to that is going to be no, but I'm happy if you want to take that on notice. They've got some evidence of how this may have harmed. Because bottom line is I'm saying the claim is rubbish. Here I have, and I'd ask to table this, uh, uh, this is taken off the, the World Wide Web. This is VAE's um, a list of... VAE's list of um, global combat ship UK industry con contribution. Okay? In the UK, it's, it's not a secret who's, who's being involved. It, it, it's, it's, you know, people are quite comfortable in saying um, these are the people who, who are part of our program. So I understand, does that reflect the contracts they have in place, Senator, or the people they're approaching to put contracts in place? Well, it, it... And that's the difference, I think, that we're talking about here. We're talking about a pre-subcontract process in this element. I think that may be a post-contract process. I'm not familiar. I defer to uh, Mrs. L Ms. Lutz to, to answer that. Uh, Cheryl Lutz, um, First Assistant Secretary, um, SHIPS in CASG. Uh, this list is, in some cases, um, contractors that are in place, and in other cases, contractors um, that they would be negotiating with. Okay. So, same situation. Well, I, if they're negotiating, they've been selected. They um, have all been selected. All of these contractors have been selected for the Type 26. Okay. Yes. Um, again, I... Yeah, I cast an eye, and you know that I run a company. I've worked inside a company. Simply the naming, the name of a company, and the fact that it, uh, uh, it's a potential contributor. I can, uh, I can tell you, if, even companies that are not on this list would be contacting Naval Group and saying, "We'd like to become involved in the program." Um, Indeed, in the process, Senator, I can assure you that uh, companies beyond hmm. these are being considered um, as uh, as we go through procurements for the future submarine program. Okay, so let's go to uh, another page in this document which uh, gives rise to uh, um, some, some... So if I go to page 47, working in partnership with an Australian build and sustainment organisation. This uh, was fully redacted up until the AAT um, uh, resolution. And what it reveals is that uh, when DCNS made its offer, that it was intending to partner with ASC. Now, ASC knew that, and DCNS knew, knew that. Why would you redact that? Why would you withhold that under FOI and potentially to a committee? Well, I, I'd say it hasn't been withheld from a committee. Um, Only because of the FOI. I, well, I, th th that's your position, um, Senator, on that particular issue. Um, but um, um, as, as I said, we, we went through a process, a decision-maker made a decision, um, and, um, and um, 
and, and that's, that's what came of that. Um, as you state, it, it is in the document that's released now and that you have, uh, and, and indeed is on the public record on the FOI register. Mm. Has that caused any harm? Has uh, ASC litigated against um, Naval Group for not including them as a partner? Has any commercial fallout as a result of this being disclosed? No, and I, I forgive me, I, I don't recall uh, what the original um, uh, exemption sought was under the redaction then, so I don't know whether it was a commercial one or otherwise. Uh, uh, this just goes to harm, any harm that might have flown from the disclosure of this information. Are you aware of any harm that has been caused by the disclosure of this information? No, and again, I don't know whether it went to a view that that, uh, that constituted deliberative material for consideration of the government as to the way the bill would be uh, OK, I'd like to get way. to the proposition as to why the committee thinks it's, so, it's important to get access to these, these documents. We're trying to look at a sovereign naval capability and how that's being built up by the Def Department of Defence in the context of the naval <coughs> shipbuilding program. In order to do that, um, the committee wants to see what was promised during the tender in terms of industry capability, what each of the tenderers um, promised, and then what was contracted, and then trying to understand the difference. So, uh, and some of this goes to proper process. I've had some, a talk with, uh, with finance officials ab about this. Uh, if we look at this particular document, what has been disclosed in this particular document, uh, and you were there when I, when, when I queried Naval Group on this, what has been contracted by the Department of Defence in respect of the future submarine is quite different to what was offered in respect of uh, AIC. So there is no partnership with ASC in the context of a build partnership. There is a separate shipyard being built. ASC may have some involvement, but that's not what was proposed originally. I put it to you, uh, Mr Secretary, that that creates a risk. We have the best possible, um, you know, we've got the submarine expertise down in Adelaide um, uh, with a fantastic supply chain. DCNS included that in their offer to Australia and then the department took a different, uh, took a different approach, which in my view has added risk to the project and uh, again, because these documents are redacted, I can't go and have a look at what other things had been presented by these companies, these very experienced companies who know all about risk, put into their proposal for Australian industry mm -hmm. content, and then query you as to why you've taken a particular approach. There may be good reasons why you've done that, but I can't, I can't conduct my oversight role because you are denying this committee the ability to understand what was promised during the tender. And I might point out, uh, you also have a situation where the people tender to defence, they tender their best possible solution, they're evaluated against that particular solution, and then you go down a completely different pathway. It actually raises a huge probity issue for defence procurement. Because if I can simply write whatever I want to into my tender response, knowing the defence never takes this AIC plan and turns it into uh, a contract, it actually corrupts the process, the tender process. Senator, could I, could I say that um, not everything in every tender proposal is put onto contract for good reason? We, we have to assess a range of things. There are risks that we have to consider. And just because it's in a proposal, might not necessarily reflect all of the um, priorities, all of the risks assessments that defence has to make. And I think you would agree, we simply don't take what's presented to us by industry and contractualise it and expect it to work. We have to apply our due diligence in terms of looking at what's proposed, what risks arise from what's being proposed, and remembering that for the competitive evaluation process, there were a range of considerations that had to factor into the way we selected the partner and the means by which we would take the program forward. As you said earlier, 
The aim was to select a partner. There are a number of lessons learned that we wanted to implement, including the ability to hold a single entity accountable for what it was contracted to do, to manage risk in that process, to ensure that commer appropriate commercial arrangements and arrangements that suited the Commonwealth's priorities were addressed in that process. So I think to suggest that the proposal being put forward by DCNS at the time was naturally the best solution is, is not correct. We had to consider our view, and I believe you expect us to do that, to apply <coughs> judgment to any proposal presented by any company in any tender process and ensure that the objectives that we have, building on the lessons learnt that, um, that come of um, previous programs, are implemented. And, and within this proposal, and, and because you've been specific about this, I know we're probably off the subject of this committee, but you, you've made a particular point well, here. Mm. I, I, I don't believe that that presents a probity issue. I think this is the department exercising due diligence. Okay, so this is the QED moment. Senator Patrick, I, I think that'd be your last sort of question. I want to try sure. and bring the committee back to the situation sure. we find ourselves in before sure. we uh, get too close. Well, well, well Chair, uh, this is the QED moment. This is the exact conversation that the committee wants to have with defence. We want to understand what was offered, what was contracted, and how that fits within the task of building a sovereign naval, cap uh, sovereign, uh, naval shipbuilding capability. And I understand that's before you in the plans you have well, I, as they appear I, now. OK. So, so, so this is the, the, what you've just had, that conversation you've just had with me, is the exact conversation this committee wants to have in its inquiry but can't because we have been denied access to the, to the, to the documentation in full. Okay? That's, that's what we hear about today. Hmm. Trying to find a resolution to a problem so that we can go ahead, we can examine and do our work, and I say you are fettering us in doing that. You have delayed this committee by months in doing this, which is the basis upon which um, I will potentially refer something to the Privileges Committee, noting all of the past background and the past refusals to pro pro provide information. Okay, and I, I'd just like to go through with the Secretary the, uh, a couple of you know, fairly basic steps. So you don't uh, disagree that the, the Senate has the power um, to reference and committees to request information. So there's no dispute there, is there? You, you do understand that if the the Senate um, is frustrated by a minister and the minister refuses to produce information, it's clear that the Senate has the power to enforce its orders. There's no dispute there, is there? It is clear that the Senate has the power to enforce its orders. See Senate P Committee of Privileges 49th report. The refusal of a minister to comply with the law of the Senate may ultimately be dealt with with the contempt of the Senate with penalties applied in accordance with the Parliamentary Privileges Act 1987. On most occasions, however, ministerial refusals to produce information are resolved through political means according to the circumstances of the case. But there are remedies, punitive remedies, coercive remedies, uh, impeding the process of, uh, or the progress of legislation through motions to postpone consideration of particular bills including until after the requested information has been produced or taking up time that would otherwise be spent on government legislation. You're familiar with all that process, are you not, Mr. Mayor? I am, Senator. And in spite of that being clearly communicated to you, and despite of resolutions of the Senate requesting the information, you're still firmly of the view, with the support of other departments, that you're not going to do it. Is that the case we're at at the moment? Chair, would, uh, uh, the, the minister and the government has taken a view yep. about what would be provided. Um, the department is complying with the minister and the government's direction. We have consulted broadly with officials in other departments. Yep. Chair, as, as, as you pointed out, there are, there are 
most in most cases, these matters are resolved through political means. And, mm. and Chair, I'm very happy to go back and report to my minister about the, the, the content and the nature of the conversation today and, and consult my minister okay. further on, on how she might wish to approach this matter. And, and just generally, you have no problem with Senate committees operating properly within camera evidence? You've got no Chair, I have, I, have, I, have, I have appeared before Senate committees over many, many years and I accept and embrace my responsibility to be held to account. Yeah. And, you know, I, I just think we're at a, an impasse here where yeah. Senator Patrick will trot out um, FOI, all sorts of evidence, which appears on the face of it to paint a fairly ordinary picture of defences decision-making in response to information. I don't have any gotcha moment here. This is a Senate reference. We're given instruction to, you know, to, to go through and scrutinise expenditure capability and the like. Our secretary diligently goes through the uh, proper protocol, advice from the clerk, requests information. And the picture that I see as the chair of the committee is extraordinarily ordinary redacted information publicly available. It appears as if you delegated our request to the lowest uh, officer on the totem pole without instruction about how to deal with it. That's my view. And I haven't heard anything here today that changes that view. So really, um, we just want to get on and do the work of the Senate. The Senate gave us this work. We would like to progress it efficiently and in an evidence-based way and produce a proper a report, as we always do, for the Senate to, or for the government to consider and respond to in the three months and table in the Senate. I, I, I'm, I'm at a loss to understand why we're at such a impasse about provision of information essentially to taxpayers. And, and that's their bottom line here. They're the ones who are going to have to, um, you know, they're the ones who provide the funds and through our Senate processes we can scrutinise and give a view. Uh, it's extraordinary in my view, and I, um, I think we've had a fair uh, discussion this morning, and Senator Patrick's put a lot of evidence on the paper, but I don't think we're advanced one iota. I think we're in the same boat as we started at 9.30. Do you have a different view, Mr Moriarty? No, Senator, I, I, I hear that that's your view. I think there was a concession that the Secretary's undertaken to go back to the Minister. Uh, there's another perspective here in that uh, um, there may have been confusion that this was going to, that, 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 that might have been passed to companies that this was going to be made public and that's not the case. There may be a pathway through here, um, Chair, and I'm hoping we can find one so that I don't have to exercise my rights as a Senator. Okay. Just, yeah, further to that, I mean, there's been, um, it's been put today that uh, the department's been in contempt of the Senate and as possibly the, was definitely the, the newest senator to this committee. I just want to clarify, I've gone through, I've found uh, the motion that, that you put, Chair, asking for the documents. I can't find any other motions that have been put subsequently since the department provided the reports. So in order for the department to be in contempt, there would have to have been another direction or a, a further motion. I believe you put one forward that then you withdrew, Senator Patrick. No, no. So just, just to be absolutely clear, there was an order for production made for the return of these documents to the committee. The Department of Defence uh, offered a public interest immunity. That immunity was not accepted by the Senate. It went to a vote of the Senate and the minister was ordered to hand over the documents. There is a 1975 resolution of the Senate that sets out the process. Once the, once the Senate's made its decision, that's the final decision, and from that point on, contempts are involved, and, and that's where we'll get to. And, and I acknowledge but we're not at that point yet. No, 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 that the order has been made by the Senate that it does not accept the public interest immunity and the documents are to be handed over. That's, that's normally the end of the matter. There has been some interaction between uh, Defence and the, the, the Secretariat since that point in time, uh, trying to find a resolution. It may end up before the Privileges Committee of the, of the Parliament. I hope it doesn't, but, uh, you know, I've, I've laid out today a series of, of, 
uh, situations where requests have been made by the Senate and improper um, uh, public interest immunities have been advanced. The track record of defence is not good and it's got to change. And, and I'd like to add on the record that the committee is more than willing to deal with uh, public interest immunity claims, in camera evidence and the like, as all committees of the Senate do. And we look forward to defence and the Secretariat and the Minister um, you know, coming a bit closer to our position so as we can move forward with the work of the committee as given by the Senate. So if there are no other questions, I'll thank Hansard for their uh, uh, diligence, uh, the Secretariat for uh, their ever um, efficient work and the Department for appearing here today and uh, adjourn this hearing. Thank you. Thank you.